Well, good morning, St. George's. It's so good to see you all on this beautiful Sunday morning where we can gather together with joy and celebration. If this is your first time with us, welcome. We're glad to have you with us. And if you're joining us online, welcome. I love that whether we are here physically or online and hundreds of miles away, we can gather together to praise God. Isn't that good? So welcome. We continue our worship on page three in your bulletin. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Isaiah wherein the prophet continues his emphasis on God's requirement for justice beyond ritual. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt and you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, 
If you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us read together from Psalm 103 responsively, and we'll read by verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless, Bless the, the soul, Lord, Lord, my soul, and forget not all, all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O oh God, who execute righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. You are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Today's text from Hebrews 12 is a follow-on to the famous chapter where the preacher of this ancient sermon lists many of those who acted in faith and yet did not receive what had been promised. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven. At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands upon her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his oxen or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Comforter. Amen. You may be seated. So some of you may recall, uh, we had a guest preacher with us last fall, last November to be precise, a woman named Susie Harding. Some of you may recall her. She was a formal, or is a former parishioner of mine from my previous parish. And over the course of our time together as priest and par or parishioner and beyond that, we've grown to have a very close friendship. Uh, and a large part of that has been because I have been journeying with her through her ordination process. She will be ordained a vocational deacon this upcoming uh, September. So it's something very exciting to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing to applaud. We like deacons. We love deacons, in fact. <laughs> Um, but so you'll recall Susie, um, and if you didn't, you know of her now. So when she came up to visit, because we have such a close relationship and friendship, she was really excited to see our new home, to experience the joys of it, and to see where we walk and move in the world. So uh, on the Saturday before uh, she came to preach, we took her, well, I took her to one of my favorite spots in New Jersey, the Livingston Mall. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Dominique and I, we love the Livingston Mall. It's just our speed, the food, the shopping, just everything. It's eclectic. It's beautiful. And so I'm showing Susie this. And um, as we do, when you're at the mall, you shop. So we found ourselves in Macy's buying heels together. And we get up to the cash register. And, you know, I check out first. And then I step to the side. And she comes up, and she's got the same cashier. And while she's checking out, I'm just sitting there very patiently beside her, scrolling on my Facebook. And um, as I'm scrolling, a news announcement popped up from the Episcopal Diocese of Virginia about a resolution that had passed at their diocesan convention. For those of you who don't know what diocesan convention is, it is a meeting, a gathering of the representatives of all the churches in a particular diocese or area to do ministry together and to figure out how we move forward as a ministry. And knowing that Susie's getting ordained in Virginia and I was ordained from Virginia, we pay attention when things like that come up from there. 
And the news announcement was that a resolution passed that moved $10 million of Virginia's endowment into reparation and reconciliation work around race. As a huge, huge deal. Most dioceses haven't done that. Even fewer secular organizations have done that. So this is a big deal. And Susie and I have been in and out. When I was in that diocese, this was something we were working on together. And since me leaving, she's continued to be a part of. So I knew she'd be excited about it. So I just turned to her real quick as she's checking out. I'm like, hey, Susie, guess what? That resolution for the $10 million towards racial reconciliation and reparations, it passed. Without a second's hesitation, both of her hands fly up and she screams, Hallelujah, praise Jesus, <laughs> in the middle of Macy's. <laughs> and needless to say, everyone within about a 20 foot radius of us stopped what they were doing. They just looked over like, what is going on? <laughs> And the poor cashier, she was so taken off, she, like, she literally had to like step back. <laughs> but, you know, it was just, it, I, I point to that, there was such a joyfulness that just had to come forth from her. And that joyfulness, it disturbed everyone in that store. Everyone paid attention. There was something happened and it stopped them in their tracks. And Susie turned to the cashier and she says, I apologize if I startled you. This just happened in our diocese. And sometimes you just have to stop whatever you're doing to give thanks to God because it's that good. I share that story because it, it's the story that immediately comes to mind for me when I read this gospel passage. Because we have a similar moment in it. And to, to put this into some connection, think about last week. We were talking about how Jesus doesn't come to bring peace, but disruption and fire, disturbance. Here we find Jesus in the synagogue. Now, remember, the synagogue at this point in time isn't just the, the home for the religious community. It is the home of the wider community as well. It's a community hub. It's, it's about like being at a mall or in church, or other places. <laughs> and it's a public sphere. And there's this woman who has been plagued by this illness, this sickness, for 18 years. 18 years where she is hunched over. Just imagine for a moment the depth of that woman's pain physically to be hunched over. Think of the emotional and spiritual impact that that has, not being able to look up to see the sky easily, or to see in front of you with any ease, or to look in another person's face without hurting your neck. That's a painful existence for 18 years. And Jesus sees her, calls her over, and says, woman, you are healed, and lays hands on her. Jesus heals her, and the moment, the moment that healing occurs, she stands up straight, and what does she do? Praise God. I just imagine her giving an outburst like Susie did in that Macy's, and it just fills me with joy and happiness. And just like the people in Macy's were disturbed with Susie, all the people in the synagogue were disturbed, disrupted, by this woman's joy. And we hear where the, the leaders of the synagogue come at that joy. They, they come at it. They're disturbed and disrupted so much from it that they don't know what to do with it. And so, they, what do they turn to? Their rules, their legalism, and they, they say, this shouldn't happen. But Jesus uplifts this woman and celebrates her healing and her joy. Today, what I hear the Spirit saying to us is less about a sermon, about a teaching, uh, or, or a moral lesson of don't do this and don't do that. I hear an invitation to embrace the joy, to embrace the blessing of God in our lives. We, we all know this, or else we wouldn't be gathered here. We, we know how challenging the world can be. We know how painful it can be, how we can suffer through it. 
but we also know God's healing presence. We know that hand of Jesus coming up and laying it on our head and healing us. Whether it's been healing of a physical illness or something we've been emotionally struggling with, a sense of identity, whatever it is, we all have had moments where we have been healed by the power of Christ or else we would not be here. And when those healings happen, when the miraculous things happen, when the unexpected things happen, that joy bubbles up. There is, while our, our faith, our Christian walk can be challenging and hard at times, it is also filled with love and joy and blessing. And I feel like we miss that a lot of the time. In our wider world, particularly in this country, we don't do well with celebration. We don't do well with celebrating truly meaningful things in public. We, we are instead disrupted by it. And yet, that's exactly what Jesus invites us into. Not just to disrupt the world and how we live and how we change and challenge the world, but disrupt the narrative of the world through our joy, through our thanksgiving, through blessing and praising God as a constant reminder that no matter how dark and heavy this world, this life may seem, that there is someone, something much greater than us that is providing healing and transformation, that in the midst of the darkness there is also great light and hope. I hear an invitation to embrace the joy. I've had a personal experience with this recently myself. As y'all know, I went uh, to the beach in July to spend it with my dad and my sister and her family. And to be perfectly honest, going into that space, um, I had a lot of trepidation, a lot of anxiety around it. My father is um, living with early onset Alzheimer's. And this is probably the last large family vacation we would get to have together. And, and as every family is, mine is extremely messy and loving and wonderful, but messy and loud. <laughs> and so going into that week, I had all these ideas of what it would be. And I was fearful and I was anxious. And yet, every single day on that trip, everything I thought would happen didn't happen. And the things I thought would never happen, all of a sudden, were happening all around me. There is so much love and healing and joy. There is a growth and a, a coming together of me and my sister. And there is space where my dad and I just found so much beautiful, loving intimacy together in a way that we've never known. And what I love to do is, it's a practice of mine whenever I'm at the beach, is in the evenings I go out to pray. I just, it's a feeding place for my soul. And so every single night I was going out onto this beach, praying and praising God and giving thanks for these miracles. And it got to the final night, and I go out again onto the beach. And it's around nine o'clock at night, and the beaches in, well, this particular beach in North Carolina is a little bit different than the ones here in the Jersey Shore. Um, there's not a lot of people out on it in the evenings. This is more of like a family, kind of smaller gathered space. So when I went out, I was literally the only one on the beach for just hundreds of feet. I couldn't see anyone. And so I had the privacy of this space. And so I go up into the water, I'm maybe about knee deep in it, and I just start singing. That's how I praise God. That's how I give my joy and give thanks is through song. And so here I am standing in the water and I am praising God. And you'll understand why I'm telling you this in a moment. My hands were in one of three positions, either here, here, or here. For most of us, I think we would identify that as signs of prayer, maybe. So here I am standing in the water singing God's praises all by myself and then about five ten minutes into it this family comes out with their flashlights and their nets and they're looking for sand crabs remember I'm the only one on this beach 
so much space around. They didn't go any of that space. They spent their entire time within 10 to 12 feet of me. <laughs> and I'm just being polite. I'm like, okay, they're going to do their thing. I'm just going to continue with my thing. We'll be good. But for you know, the first few minutes that they were out there, about five, 10 minutes or so, every so often I would get a flashlight flashing up on me and it would disturb me. And I would turn around and look at them and they would just dart down and keep going back to their sand crabs. And after, like I said, five, 10 minutes of this, I just talked to God and I was like, God, all right, they, they want some privacy on this. Clearly they want this space for some reason. I'm just gonna go back in, we're good. And as I'm walking, back to the entrance of the beach, I noticed at another entrance, a patrol car pulling up onto the beach. And I ponder, wow, that's curious. I wonder what's going on. No one's out here. Maybe they're trying to you know, check and see if people are starting fires or something like that. So I keep going into the, uh, towards the, the entrance to the beach. And as I am going towards the road, a police officer walks right past me. And within a couple seconds of him passing me, he turns around and says, excuse me, sir, were you just out in the water? I said, yeah, I was out in the water. Is the beach closed? Like, did I miss something? He was like, oh, no, no. You know, just, I, I just wanted to know, like, if you were in the water, was anyone out there with you? I was like, no, it was just me in the water, except for this one family. I was out there praying. He was like, wait, you were what? I was praying, officer, I'm an Episcopal priest. And he was like, wait, you're a priest? I was like, yes, I'm a priest, I pray. <laughs> And, and I, I tell him the full story of being there with my family and what the experience is, and I was just out here giving thanks. And he was like, oh, well, I, I'm, you know, you, that's totally fine and whatnot, but yeah, just walk with me to the patrol car at the opening of the beach. And as we were walking, he was telling me that they had received this very odd, strange phone call about someone who seemed to be in mental, emotional distress out on the beach. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so, so we get to the cop car and as he's telling me this, I'm like, oh, well, I'm so sorry that you, I, I was literally just praying, as you can see, I'm totally fine. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. It was just an odd phone call, but he never said why it was odd. And so we get to the patrol car and he, the window's down, he's got two of his colleagues in the car and he kind of leans over and he's like, hey guys, I think this is the person we had that phone call on. He says he was out there praying and he's a priest. And they just broke out into laughter. They had this huge smile on their face. And I kind of bent down like, hey, I'm sorry that y'all got called out for this. And like, no, 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 we're just glad no one's hurt or anything like that. But it was a very odd phone call. You see, the woman, when she called us, she wasn't making a lot of coherent sense. She was saying stuff like, oh, I, there's like a merman out here that seems to be like in distress. <laughs> I said, well, I'm not a merman. I was just praying, but as long as we're good. <laughs> And so I guess the, the moral of that story is I am an Episcopal sleesh ma or priest slash merman. So um, <laughs> if you find any good fins, let me know. I'm looking for some. <laughs> but, it, 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 and there's, there's a lot that could be unpacked in this story. I'm sure I'll use this image again. We could talk about how within being 10 to 12 feet, if the people were concerned, they could have asked if I was okay. We, we'll talk about that in another sermon. But the point I want to point to in this, the, the core I want us to pay attention to, is that though it started out as a private space, it became a public space in my place of prayer. And how my joy at celebrating and giving thanks to God disturbed and disrupted this family. They didn't understand it. It reminds me of how this woman in the gospel shared her joy at being healed, and yet the joy disrupted and wasn't fully understood. The same way that Susie's joy in Thanksgiving disrupted and wasn't fully understood. I hear an invitation for us to lean into joy, into blessing, and seeing it as a natural, vital part of what it means to be a Christian. Not just to proclaim God's goodness and God's justice in the hard spaces, but when God's miracles happen, when the healings happen, to proclaim with joy. And as Susie so eloquently said, sometimes God is so good, you just have to stop and give thanks no matter where you are. That is a gift that we as the church are given. 
that we can sing with joy that no matter what pain or whatever we're struggling with, that there is the promised and fulfilled hope that God is good, that miracles happen, that healings happen, that we are transformed and changed. And that is a gift that we can offer the world. That is a part of proclaiming our faith, our baptisms in word and example. By creating space for joy, letting the world be disrupted by something amazing, something miraculous. Joy is disruptive, and it's so good, and we need it. For in the world that we've been in and continue to be in, and with all of the ups and downs, the, the news stories and the, the continuing violence in, in Ukraine and everything going on with our government, whatever it is, we look around, we can see the pain. But perhaps we're called to also reveal the joy. And perhaps we're invited to disrupt people so that they might see where the joy comes from. And that perhaps we can see and live this world a different way. So my friends, let us embrace the blessing of God. Let us embrace the joy. And as we sing today, let us sing that joy. As the prayer in um, the Compline service, a section of it goes, shield the joyous. May God shield us so that we may share our joy. May it disrupt the world, and may it transform us all. Amen. I invite you to please stand as you are able. And together on page eight in your bulletin, let us affirm our faith in the historic words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who are the gospel and all who see the truth. 
for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Carly, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, in our, paris, in our parish cycle of prayer this week, we pray for Meg, Scott, Theo and Izzy Davis, Darby De Bonus, Magalie Dennis Roman, and Paul and Catherine Desjardin. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. To those joining us online, peace of the Lord be with you. Good morning. My name is Dan Mitchell and I'm the junior warden here at St. George's and I welcome you to today's service. I have a couple of announcements that I want to draw to your attention. Um, even though it's summer, we are beginning to think about the fall and our planning for that. Um, so we are going to start um, planning for our Sunday school program. So we, the Catechies of the Good Shepherd Atrium is, is underway and we are looking for assistance to help us with that as well as we are going to be doing Sunday school for our older elementary children. So we are looking for Sunday school teachers and assistance with that. So if you're interested, please see Reverend Grant um, to help the, with, that, the, with that program. And we haven't left the adults behind either. Um, confirmation, um, there will be a confirmation class starting in September as well that will run for the whole uh, program here. And um, you do not, um, you could have already been confirmed and still attend the class. It's a great way to sort of refresh yourself upon um, our faith and, and our traditions. So if you're interested in, in joining that uh, class, please see your Reverend Grant on that as well. And finally, um, just a reminder, you know, our, our food pantries get a real hit in the summer. So we are looking for donations to a Holy Trinity. And right now they are looking for shelf uh, stable milk. So if you could bring that in and leave it at the church door, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. 
Um, I have one other announcement before that I have a liturgical note for us. Um, Nat, last week, some of you may have been thrown off when I invited you to stand at the communion hymn uh, once we've all received. This is a practice that Megan and I are trying to build into our worship that we sing our communion hymns together once we have received. So for the Taze hymn that we'll have during communion, Megan will be playing on the organ as we're receiving. But once um, everyone has received, we'll go into the hymn. And at that point, I invite us all to stand um, so that we can sing and proclaim with joy together that beautiful peace. And then the final announcement, which some of you may already know, we have hired our youth and children's minister, who is our very own Bridget Dwyer. We are so excited to have her join us in this ministry in a new way, and so I'd like to invite her to offer a few words. Thank you, Grant, and um, thank you, St. George's. I, um, I, I walked in here a little over a year ago with a, um, with a broken ordination process and a broken spirit. And this church has done nothing but lift me up and um, put faith and trust and, and love into me uh, until I could do that myself. And so thank you for that. Thank you for this opportunity. And more than that, more to the point, actually, um, we're going to do stuff. We're going to do amazing things. We already have so many young people that work with us on the altar here uh, in uh, in liturgy, and if you look on your if you look on the back of your bulletin, it lists who the ministers of St. George's are, and it begins with the people of St. George's. And in that, um, what what I hope to do is lift up the ministry of our, younger, uh, of our younger parishioners so that they can bring their wisdom and, and their understanding of, of, of what it means to live out God's love in the world to us. And so I'm looking forward to that. So pray for them, pray for me, pray for this ministry, and uh, we're going to do amazing things. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Bridget's first day officially is September 1st, so you've got some time to give her some well wishes before we dive in for the fall. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Mother, we who have re been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do so for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our mothers and our fathers, God of Sarah, Hagar, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. 
risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, in the language of our hearts, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Mother and Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. I thank you, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. My friends, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Standing or kneeling as you feel called to pray, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. My friends, life is short, and we do not have long to gladden the hearts of those who journeyed this road with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to be compassionate and kind. Be bold in proclaiming the joy of God's healing presence in your life. For joy disrupts and joy transforms. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Comforter be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. And as Megan gives us an announcement, if anyone would like to join us in the procession out, we have crosses and ribbons, and you don't even have to do that. You can just come walk in if you want, but come on up, and please join us for coffee hour. It'll be downstairs in the parish hall. Sorry, I'm supposed to dismiss this, aren't I? <laughs> I'm like, what's the music starting? <laughs> Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.